Well, welcome to this tutorial on how to do a double knot in Quilt 3D. So here I will share some tips and tricks which I found very useful when making these sorts of things. So I hope you find this useful as well and, you know, just go for it. Just do it. You got this. It's easy. So I will start with making the belt itself. So I never work uh, with the whole length of the belt at the beginning um, because it's just not necessary. So I do it like piece by piece. So first I start um, with the measurement of the waist. Um, so for that you need, to, you need to know the measurement of your avatars. So you can use um, edit measurement. Click on this measurement and you can see it's 62 centimeters. And um, make the belt accordingly. So I will put two centimeters on top. So I will have 64 centimeters times four centimeters. And uh, there are at least I know two ways how to put a belt on top of something. Um, so in this case, I will use the easiest way because it's a very easy garment underneath. Um, so just select the whole garment, freeze it. So if you don't know the shortcut, you can right click on the garment and you will find the freeze option here. So shortcut control K. And I will put the belt on arrangement point and I will also sew the ends of the belt together so it closes. And the last important step is to put the layer on one just for this pattern piece. So what this does, it basically tells the software that uh, the belt should be on top of everything which is on layer zero. So if you click on your garment, by default it's always on layer zero. So let's see what happens. The belt crawls on top of the t-shirt quite easily because this is a very simple garment. Um, sometimes it struggles when you have folds and some other details, but um, yeah, in this case, make sure that the simulation is stable, that the belt is, uh, is not catching in into um, the garment. And once it's, it's okay, you can take it off layer one. So it's not necessary to keep it on layer one. Um, so put it on layer zero and unfreeze the garment and you can see it nicely gathers. So now I can start the tying process itself. Um, for that I again freeze the garment because if it's not frozen it's much more difficult to tie something. So you need to secure this, um, this simulation of the garment. So use freeze for that. Um, yeah. So for tying this knot I am using this fabric, this cotton fabric. I don't really know how to pronounce this word so it's this fabric. Um, yeah. And the next step, I need some extra length for my belt. So I offset pattern outline and I add extra 15 centimeters. So that's normally enough um, for the double knot. Maybe sometimes you need more, but 15 is fine. And I delete the extra points because I don't need them. And I also delete the sewing because I don't also, I don't need the ends to be sewn together. And next I add, with holding down W, I add pins and I can also lower the particle distance to 10. So I always start with 10 and then I lower it to 5 and uh, do the simulation. Oh yeah, I'll add this fabric. So why, why I choose this fabric? So by accident I tied the previous knot um, with this fabric and it was much more stable than when I tie it with um, the default fabric for some reason. I don't, I don't really know why. I assume it's because it has, it's less stretchy. So the, the default fabric is, is much more stretchy than this one. So maybe that's the trick. Yeah. So now I need to use the single pins to create an opening here so that I can pull, um, one end of the knot through. So something like this. Then you can choose which, which end you want to pull through. I will pull this one. Like that. Yeah, so often these pins um, are messing up your knot. So whenever you have um, done this, make sure to delete the pins 
because they will not be very helpful. And you also need to um, tie the knot. Um, ah, what was the word? Forgot. Tighter. <laughs> you need to tie the knot tighter. Tighter. Oh gosh. And uh, so that's why it doesn't really make sense to keep these pins. Yeah. Perfect. Amazing. And just slowly move the ends so that the knot gets tighter like that and make sure you stop and start simulation from from time to time because once your um, knot falls apart you can always undo um, and you don't lose the whole work so I also would suggest to do very slow movements because if you pull aggressively like this you can see it very easily comes apart so just be slow be gentle and everything will be okay so once the first knot is finished and it's stable and it's tight enough you need to secure it so for that again I use single pins oh and also at this point you should probably lower the particle distance to 5 Right. And now we, um, I will do the next, um, the next loop. Be careful with this. Um, I will do the next knot. So here as well, use pins to create this opening. Oh, this is quite high so it's always important to look at what you're doing from all sides not just one viewpoint where is this bad boy okay so this is a good starting position yeah and again the pins Just do the opening, make sure you stop and start simulation from time to time. Oh, this should work. Okay, now I will um, pull this through. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks good. So I'll already at this point, it would be good to delete all the pins. Um, so you can just right click delete all the pins and add pins at the end because these you still need and release and now slowly start to make the knot more tight also make sure to uh, move the ends closer to the body so that the knot is not pulled away from from the body yeah like that looks okay and what else so uh, i found this very useful when you change the friction um, amount to 99 I don't uh, I don't really know what exactly that does that do I assume it makes the fabric less f slippery so um, therefore the knot holds together so it doesn't fall apart and as you can see it's quite stable here um, yeah so once the knot is done oh there's a pin oops not that one what am I doing so just make sure you delete all the pins so there are no surprises there. Yeah. So when the knot is done, you can add extra length to the ends. So either you can offset as pattern outline or you can just move the line. Like that. 
straight and then just let the ends fall naturally sometimes you have to help it out a bit so because the I changed the, the friction it has affected the whole belt so it will become much more sticky so you kind of have to be a bit patient in order to get like a natural look of the ends of the belt yeah. and again here be slow because if you will um, pull very quickly it will just fly all over the place yeah. looks great so when the knot is done, so if you're a bit more adventurous, you can try to add another layer. So how to do that? I will try to do it. Not always it works out, but you know, it's always good to try. So first of all, I will lower the particle distance to two. Of course, five is quite low, but you still can see that, you know, it's not completely smooth. So if your machine can handle it, you can put it on two as well. looks much better and I will do layer clone under but you see there is a huge gap between um, so obviously the simulation will not work out because of this huge gap so the trick here is to lower the additional thickness collision so I'll put it on 0 0.5 for both pattern pieces and you have to superimpose under again so then um, the distance decreases so as you can see now it looks much more promising and when you simulate just hope for the best that the knot will not fall apart looks like I'm lucky today because it seems it's working out quite well yeah great perfect and I would suggest to, um, before you put everything on particle distance two, to really work on how the ends of your belt is simulated because after that it will be quite difficult to get it straight. Um, yeah, so then you can do some other fancy things to your belt. So I will add top stitch. And be ready that the software will be quite slow because these pattern pieces are on particle distance too so both of them yeah so with top stitch i will add internal line on top stitch so this will be a very realistic type of belt i was just on one side so so once it's done you can sew these lines together like that okay great I'll put this on both normally I would create one for front and one for back um, but today I feel extra lazy okay and that's that's about it yeah you can simulate so that the um, the sewing is simulated here so this will make your belt look a bit more realistic and you can also unfreeze your garment now so it interacts with the belt So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I hope you find this useful and good luck with your nuts.